Hey Mitch. Uh, so here we are in your show Radical Cuts, currently at Wurrungabba Art Gallery. Um, I think probably a really good place to start is with the title of Radical Cuts. Yeah. What is a radical cut? <laughs> well, I think the title firstly is always a really important touchstone for me while I'm working yeah. because the process is so open-ended. It's I like it to be like a really clear um, concept that I can return to um, to kind of keep keep me oriented. Um, so the radical a radical is the first sort of root that emerges from a seed when during germination. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, thinking about the the sheet of plywood that I start with. Um, as a seed and then the, the cuts that I make into that sheet as, as the radical that kind of triggers this uh, transformation of the material into or growth and evolution of the material into um, what you end up seeing. Yeah. Um, so that being able to constantly come back to that, that idea of sort of germination or like a plant growing out of a seed um, sort of kept, keeps me oriented with that, within that more uh, open-ended mm. process of growth of the work. Yeah. So how about your process? Um, it's... Yeah, so it's, I don't start with any ideas about what I'm going to so I just start with a blank sheet of plywood and I cut it with a scroll saw so I can just sort of freehand cut out shapes um, and I'm just trying to make shapes that surprise me or uh, so you're not drawing them, you're not planning them no, not planning anything out really other than, you know, obviously knowing that I'm going to rearrange them into some composition and paint them Yeah. Um, but once you end up with these uh, randomly generated shapes, you have to figure out a way that they're going to work together mm. to make a composition. Uh, but that's quite a long, drawn-out process of you know a, this back and forth of painting them, rearranging them, yeah. changing the color slightly, changing shapes. Um, yeah. So do you? Like, do you know, okay, I'm going to make one that's these types of colours, like how your use of colour is really interesting, you know, and how does that come about, how does that evolve? The colour is quite arbitrary as well to begin with. Yeah. Um, I'm just sort of trying to differentiate the shapes to begin with because they're all white to start out. Yeah. Um, just to make it a bit easier to see and understand what's, how they're working together how they relate. Yep. Um, but then that, that will will evolve um, depending on whether you know it feels like certain areas need to be closer in tone or uh, more differentiated from one another. Yeah. Uh, so you it's it becomes about you know balancing the, the composition yeah. or, or finding and these you, interesting relationships between the shapes. Yeah, because you're you're working on multiple at once, right? Or are you yeah, on yeah. One? yeah. No, so yeah, it's not sort of you know finish one and then start the other. Um, they're all able to be changed at all times. Um, yeah. So often pieces from one work might end up in in another um, yeah. and they'll get moved around like that in the yeah. studio for a period of time yeah uh, obviously it does uh, move towards an end point um, how do you decide when it's finished <laughs> I feel like you could just keep playing and moving yeah it must be quite difficult it, you do start to find um, sort of 
these little areas where shapes line up or once I start adding the, the linear elements as well, uh, they are more cemented in place, I guess, or they're more, they have a po position, certain shapes. And um, personally, you know, I think of them all as iterations of, of one work almost. Um, so they flow together in my mind. Yeah. So this, the, the way that each individual work ends up to me is quite arbitrary as well and it doesn't uh, I don't see it that see it that see it as a sort of specific end to the work because the next one just sort of flows on from that. Yeah. Yeah. But you it's all this kind of flowing it's like you're moving towards something. Are you moving towards anything? <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it's difficult not to um, think of it with a certain direction. Uh, and it's quite hard to convey that experience in the studio of having them all open and all feeding into one another. In that respect, it feels less directional and more, I guess, in an ecological sense, you know, and a kind of interconnection mm. um, between yeah. all the works, yeah. Yeah, it definitely goes back to those ideas and mission. Yeah, so maybe more like a like a web of you know influences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Each shape has its own sort of like identity, maybe mm -hmm. you know um, that. They're part of this whole composition, but they're also individual forms that, you know, are interacting. Yeah. And, yeah, um, I mean, what is it about, so the depth is really wonderful. You really have to be seen in the flesh, I think, to just understand that, that layering and depth and space in between. Why? Why do you use this process mm -hmm. compared to, say, drawing them up on Photoshop and painting them as a flat surface? Like, what do you think you're getting from? Is it about the process or the finished yeah. outcome? Or? I developed the process, or I say I developed the process. The process developed, I think, out of maybe, you know, I wanted to understand how the formal aspects of a painting um, work to generate like a picture. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, like I kind of think of it as a, a flat picture that's been sort of exploited out a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, that you can then pan around and see how all these parts sort of work together. Yeah. Um, but then it's also hard for me to separate them as as a finished fixed work separate that from the process i go through to create them so uh, for me maybe you know it might not be as important for the viewer but for me i I'm always thinking about um, how they can move, how the parts can move and, and do something different somewhere else on the, on the work. Yeah, yeah. In relation to, um, for example, like previous bodies of work that I've made that are just on a flat canvas, that process for me, it was working on just a canvas. For me, it was more about like constantly like painting under things mm. and ch uh, changing, changing the work over and over and over again. Yeah, uh, painting new shapes, which is kind of like moving these shapes. It's just that's more labor. Intensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess that this process sort of came out of that um, as a way of 
being able to change the composition without having to, without affecting any other. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can definitely see how this process has slowly come over the years and you've been using collage and layering fabric and wood and all sorts of things kind mm -hmm. of, um, for a long time now, so actually see how it has developed. Just you mentioning Photoshop before, I was thinking about, um, you know, if I was to try and draw these shapes in Photoshop and construct it that way. I think that in a digital space, it's that it's too open-ended almost. Mm. Um, and I think part of these, and that's sort of what happens on the canvas too. You know, you can it, it can become so easy to add and subtract things. Yeah. Whereas. There's something about needing to try and make the shapes that I've got work because they are more, they're, it's more difficult to change the shape. So you have to try and keep moving it around and find where it wants to sit. Yeah, you mean on, on the saw? No, once it's cut out. Yeah. So the cutting sort of gives you, um, there's a bit of resistance there from the shape because it, it's so solid, you know, in it's, it's such a specific form yeah. now that I have to work you with. You have to work with it. I can't just control it and make it what, what I think will work or what I yeah. want to achieve, yeah. Are you pretty strict with it? Like once they're cut out, like that's it? Like if you're putting it on it, oh, if it was just a tiny bit thinner, then it would sit, sit well here. Like do you ever kind of... Not usually, so no. It'll, that with. would normally be like if it's almost right, I won't adjust it to make it fit. I'll try and put it somewhere else mm -hmm. and spin it around or put another um, yeah. piece in. The only time I usually alter the, the shape after it's cut out would be on the edge to straight to make it like a yeah. rectangular yeah. picture plane. Yeah. Yeah, so the in the studio, so whenever I've visited you, I've always um, just found myself compelled to go over to your desk or your floor and, and start playing with all the different shapes that are, that are hanging around. And it's, um, I don't know, there's something kind of almost like childlike or I don't know it's like primal Th this just playing with shapes and making arrangements and um but yeah I've always found it very like playful like I, I love doing that and I guess is playfulness is that something you're interested in is it playful for you maybe not like um, um yeah but. I wouldn't say that it's enjoyable necessarily yeah. like it's difficult to do yeah. um, you have to be very maybe a little more focused than play might imply yeah um, but I don't know I guess children at play are quite focused um, yeah like it's I fun when you come in but it sort of makes me think of chance like chance is mm -hmm. quite a big um, aspect for me um and I'm quite influenced by data and particularly Jean Art. Yeah. Um, who employed chance to access something um, maybe more real or more natural rather than, you know, the surrealist approach of trying to tap into the unconscious or, mm -hmm. and then um, proceeding to interpret that or, you know, apply meaning to the those outcomes I think um, it's more it doesn't have an end point in mind really you know or it doesn't have um, external reference in mind it just is you know I'm, I'm responding to the physical characteristics of like shape and, and color and 
time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that that's quite playful, you know. It, it doesn't attempt to um, control the situation. Yeah, just the way that certain shapes seem to to want to be, to want to sit in a certain orientation or... Um, I think of it more as something that I'm discovering rather than, you know, you, you starting with these shapes as if they're a found object almost. Mm. And just, um, you know, to go back to the idea of playing with where they where they can go you know there's an infinite number of ways they could be arranged mm. on the surface and um, but there seems to be certain certain ways they kind of lock together or mm -hmm. or even certain ways that they resist one another or push away from one another that I find interesting um, and who do you look at? Do you have any artists or movements that you're influenced by? Or um, I already mentioned uh, Jean Arc. Yeah. Um, there's obvious similarities between some of his work, um, but certainly his ideas and the data ideas about um, art or nature and humanity being synonymous or, you know, by extension, yeah. art and nature. Are you um, talking about his paper collage works, those um, full Yeah, paper so paper. the use of chance yeah. there, but I think the way he talked about abstraction, you know, he didn't think of his work as abstraction. He thought of it as, you know, more specifically, you know, uh, like just a real object. It's not an abstraction from um, something in nature or, mm -hmm. or from another image and it doesn't necessarily reference um, things outside of itself. Mm -hmm. um, so that influences... It. Yeah, it's influencing the process which, um, you know, the process is what leads to the specific images that you see. Um, so I do think about more, um, it's probably more so artists that influence my thinking on the process. Yeah. So another one that um, was a big influence for me was Gabrielle Orozco. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so he he's quite interested in play as well in games and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I think just his approach to materials is quite open-ended and, um, you know, he's just sort of um, re like arranging found objects and, and just seeing how different things speak to each other. Mm -hmm. um, he used photography a lot as well to do quite um, ephemeral like works in the street that he would photograph. Um, so I think that idea that the work can sort of come together as in this moment and then just dissipate again as mm -hmm. the material sort of moves through the world um, influences yeah my thinking about process as well yeah um, I'm trying to think of not so many um, you know I look at a lot of painters and it can be quite hard to not look at what other people are doing in painting and just want to do something like that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why I can't, I can't really pinpoint specific painters that would influence my practice. Yeah. Um, because it's more that, that process-based stuff that has influenced the way I work. Yeah. Um, you think you'll you'll stick with using the ply and stuff for a good while? Like I, I think it's a, a, is what makes it really stand out. 
yeah. rather than yeah. it being a painted surface. Yeah, I think that collage element is, you know, is here to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, you, you know, there's a lot of collage in art history too that's obviously influenced me. Yeah. Uh, in cubism and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Mitch, and congratulations on a beautiful show. Thank you. <laughs>